Welcome back to the great Johanna's live stream. I do this usually every day now, uh, usually around 8 p.m. Western European time. That would be like CET plus two or something like that. I don't know exactly. Uh, my name is Johannes Mathis Conrad or Johannes Matthijs Conrad. And, uh, you know, you can find me on YouTube at The Great Johannes or on TikTok with the same username and so on and so forth. And usually I like to keep talking about uh, how do we further our cause? How do we, for example, fight for the survival of our people in Europe and elsewhere outside of Europe? I noticed that because I always speak from the European perspective, I started calling, uh, you know, United States, Canada, South Africa, and Australia, New Zealand. So I start calling those places Europe's former colonies, right? The former colonies. So um, as I'm waiting for some people to come in through the live chat, uh, people can always talk to me, chat with me, ask me questions. If I see your questions, I'll try to answer it. You know, I noticed that there are some regular viewers viewers already who uh, who watch me uh, almost every day and other people, they tune in now and then, and that's fine. Um, I just need a little sip to get started. So, uh, what day is it today? It's Thursday already. <clears throat> so... You know, when when the same thing is being done in every nation in the West, it's a plan, it's a program, right? So if you notice that uh, in Germany, uh, the state says they are legally obligated to house immigrants. So whenever new houses are built in Germany, they go to the immigrants. Say a thousand new houses are built, 50 go to the natives and 950 go to immigrant families. In Ireland today, there was news that uh, a Bangladeshi family came to Ireland and was housed in a new apartment on day one of their arrival because the government says we are legally obligated to do so. But apparently the same governments, whether in Germany or Ireland or in the Netherlands or anywhere in the Western world, don't seem to feel any obligations toward the native peoples, toward the homeless or toward young people trying to start families or toward students living in very small, crampy student ho housing, or toward basically people in their late 20s still living at home with their mom and dad, looking for a place to live. There are people in the Netherlands, like many people, they have jobs, they're in their 20s, they're 25 years old or so, right? They have a long-term relationship, and they still sleep with uh, mom and dad, or uh, you know, mother-in-law and father-in-law and so on. These people are more than ready to start families, but no, the Western governments and the Western po policy makers literally stomp on these people, on the native Europeans and the native white people elsewhere abroad, right? They don't care about us. And why is that? Why, they, why do they say they have a legal obligation to house immigrants with priority before they house their own people? Who are you, who are, who are you legally obligated to them? by to some actor that is not in Europe, not in the Western world, you are basically dealing with uh, treasonous politicians literally working for the enemy and they're not even hiding it anymore. They're not even they're not even lying anymore. Uh, someone comments uh, in Johannes, we trust. Thank you very much. You know, thanks for watching. And so, you know, it's happening everywhere in the Western world. Maybe they're going to start doing it in Eastern Europe as well where they house migrants with priority at the expense of the native people who are also deeply distressed because they are actually working with jobs. I already told you the story uh, previously about uh, people moving to London, say S Scottish people moving to London. They spend three years in a hostel before they earn enough money to actually start living in an apartment. But if they were from Bangladesh and they brought their family over with seven children and four wives, right? they would be given priority housing right off the bat and quality housing, new housing, not the old stuff. They would be given, they would be given new housing for these immigrants. You know, the plan is very clearly to fulfill that, that strange idea of Kalergi Kaldenhove, uh, you know, Kau von Kalergi Kaldenhove, Richard von Kalergi Kaldenhove, who was the <clears throat> half Japanese, half Austrian man 
who co-founded the European Union. He basically, he, he presided over the uh, pan-European Union, which was the precursor to the European Union. Uh, he came up with the blue color for the European flag. He also chose the uh, uh, Beethoven's Ode to Joy as the anthem. It was also his idea to come up with, uh, with something like a unified currency, the, the, the monetary union of the European Union. And he came up with the idea for massive open borders, for uh, mixing the European peoples with Asians and Africans and so on to make them look more like ancient Egyptians, as he said, though I don't quite believe that ancient Egyptians were mixed. Ancient Egyptians were probably something like Middle Eastern type or even Semitic type people, right? They were not that mixed. So they're trying to do something new to us by, and try to justify it with, uh, by rewriting history. The, their historical revisionism serves only to fool us in the present so that they can achieve their desired future, right? Uh, clearly, the, the Western governments do not serve their people. They do not, do not serve their voter base, right? They're trying to replace us with mass immigration on purpose, deliberately, right? to make us minorities in our own countries. And then what? And why is it all happening? Why are they even doing this? It's not like they're making money off of it because they're not. In the Netherlands, there was a report called the Borderless, uh, the Borderless Welfare State published by Am uh, University of Amsterdam. And they said that the Netherlands alone spent 400 billion euros uh, in losses, meaning uh, there's no profit. If you, if, you, if you look at cost and benefit, it's a net negative of, mine, of 400 billion euros that the Dutch state has spent on immigration and diversity, right? It's a net loss. Then why do they keep doing it? Unless the goal is really to start wiping white people out. They want to erase us on purpose. These, the government, the leadership in our in our nations, whether it's Ireland or France or Spain, the leaders of these nations are not on our side. They are traitors. They are more than traitors. They don't even. They aren't even our people anymore. They are simply the enemy. Uh, Barnabas asks why Europeans won't stand up to this. Are they scared? Well, most Europeans are not going to get free welfare like the immigrants do. So they're stuck. They have to have a job. They have to keep working to pay rent. And a lot of people, half of all people in Western in the Western world doesn't have any savings. They really do live from, from paycheck to paycheck, right? So when you take away that paycheck, you take away their job, they're toast. They know they can't make it anymore. And apparently the other half of Europeans and Westerners who do have more savings, what are they afraid of? You're right. Why don't they stand up? You know, I think maybe they think to themselves, well, as long as we're making money, we're not going to revolt. All right, then let's let's see what happens when they stop making money. Let's see what happens when Europeans start going hungry, right? Yeah, they're all bought and paid for, someone writes here. Uh, uh, someone asks, did they open the accession negations with Moldova and Ukraine for the EU? I think Hungary voted against it or didn't want to do it or bar... Or Bar no, Hungary's Orban prime minister. He's the only one really standing up for his own people, his own his own people's interests. They should do that in every European country. But you know, what's the best country to live in these days? Somewhere in Eastern Europe. But don't expect to be rich there. You're not going to have money. But you are going to be able to live among white people, at least for now, for the next decade or so. You know. That's a very big problem is that we increasingly don't have any more places where we can live, where we are actually in charge. USA has fallen, Canada has fallen, France, Germany, all these countries have fallen. What for? And I reason that it's, it's possible that uh, the Western elites only care about making money and they're just selling us. They're selling their nation to foreign bidders, to foreign uh, foreign parties, foreign investors who want to spend money or they want to buy property in the Netherlands, for example. Okay, fine. Or, or say the European elites, they want cheaper access to fuel or something. Okay, fine, we'll, we'll promote Islam, right? They simply have no morals. They only care about money and they only think to themselves, as long as they are doing well, they don't care about the rest of the people. They, do, they literally don't care about the bottom 99%, as they say, you know? 
Good morning from the land down under. So someone from Australia. Huh? You know, do you think, do you think, well, somebody asked it, do you think many bloodline wise should come back to, yeah, do you think many bloodline wise should come back to Europe? Yeah, sure. Lots of people from the former colonies of Europe should come back. The men, the women, right? Preferably young people with families and kids, because there's going to be a massive all out war. I'm going to talk about that later uh, on this show. I'm going to talk about the civil war that is coming or that is at least already being pre-programmed in the media and and how we are going to deal with it. You know, uh, someone asked, what do you think of Poland? Poland is like Germany, uh, a US occupied state at this point, just like Ukraine. They have their regime changes there all the time. Uh, they're going to have diversity and so on. It's all going to happen there. The, the, Poland has fallen. The leadership simply sold Poland to the highest bidder. And apparently it was the USA who had most money to pay or otherwise I suspect they would have just sold it to Russia. But anyway, yeah, Donald Tusk. Yeah, but this is all fake. You know, the Polish elections were fake. The, 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 US, the US Secret Service meddles with elections all over the world and then pretend as though they aren't doing it at home as well. You know? Right, right. The elites only care about money, you know? Yeah, we have to ask the question, how did we reach this point? Well, that's one question, but you can spend a lot of time trying to answer it. The real, the real question is, what are we going to do now? Looking ahead at the future, we need the sort of skills that Che Guevara had and the guerrillas in that war in Cuba. Uh, they were fighting an enemy. I don't know who it was, actually. Was it like the American capitalists or wherever they were fighting? It's the way that they did it. I don't have to agree with Marxist guerrillas, but I can learn from any kind of guerrillas fighting empires and fighting powers like the Boers in the in the early 1900s 1901 or so 1902 the Boers of South Africa fought the British Empire and they almost won you know this is what we need need to learn from we're going to have to acquire all these skills but because let me make something very clear if there are people like Alex Garland comes out with a new movie called Civil War where they clearly depict white men as the bad guys right you know, and then you have these loser diversity types, like these these Vivax and these Nimarata, Nikki Haley types. Oh, we're all Americans. We're all Americans. Have you seen videos like that on TikTok where some really serious looking guy goes like, you know, we're all Americans. I'm not African American. I'm not German American. I'm, we're all American. We're just Americans. Like, what is wrong with you? They are wiping you out. They don't care about you. You may think you need to care about them, but they don't care about you. They will wipe you out as soon as they have the chance. And what good, what good is it when you are just down to, what, 5% or 1% of the U.S. population and say, well, we're all Americans. No, they're throwing you into the ovens. They're going to burn you while they skin you alive. You know, you have no life unless you learn to stand up for yourself. So in this kind of movies like Civil War that, they're, that is coming out now, you know, uh, they can depict us as evil, but at the same time, the way they depict us wrongly it also means that they don't understand us. And this is our benefit. We're not going to explain it to them anymore. In fact, we don't have to explain anything to anybody anymore. My advice is if mainstream media ever interview you about anything at all, lie. Lie your ass off. Lie your balls off, right? Cook up with totally unbelievable, fantastical stories, but tell the stories with a straight face and then assure them that that's the real truth and that's what you saw with your own eyes. Fool the media, man. Never, ever tell the media the truth anymore. They're all liars. It doesn't matter if it's CNN or Fox News or Alex Jones or Jordan Peterson calls you for an interview. Lie, 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 lie. You know, <laughs> lie your balls off. You know, these people don't deserve to know our plans and our thoughts anymore. You know, forget about them. Forget about the whole mainstream world and even the so-called deep, uh, deep, uh, what, what do you call it? The deep, uh, the deep intellectuals of Jordan Peterson or whatever, whatever they call themselves, the four horsemen or something. You know, yeah, sorry. Somebody asked me if I just stream on TikTok. Yeah, I just stream on TikTok. Yeah, because uh, on YouTube, you have like, 20 second delay between questions and answering and it's really frustrating very very primitive i have to admit youtube is very primitive compared to uh tiktok tiktok let, lets me uh you know talk and interact with you almost in real time there's almost no delay here and so that's the whole point you know you know uh someone asked here uh, and i feel like it'd be wrong 
uh, to country shop, you know, as I don't want to take resources from natives. You know, country shopping, you know, us Western type men, we are brothers now. We are we are all guerrillas in the same war against the same evil empire. Uh, you know, what are our options, you know? If you realize that in the United States, for example, let's take the U.S. as an example for a moment. Most, the majority of white people actually live in the countryside or in the suburban world and the countryside. The countryside is majority white. That means you already have strategic access to the resources, to the waterways, to the pipelines, you know, to the electricity grid that runs through your land. You, ha you have access to the, you can control the bridges and the roads. And this is the first thing, as, as soon as shit hits the fan, you immediately seize these uh, infrastructural points, the bridges, the waterways, and so on. You control the water, the food supply, the food trucks, they go through your land. And like guerrillas, like the guerrillas of South Africa, they were on horseback. You might actually go on horseback, by the way. You don't actually need cars. You can do a lot of this on horseback. You can control these, uh, the infrastructure uh, that feeds the cities because the cities are sitting ducks. Now, the cities are going to respond by sending the army, right? And the police. Well, the police will probably stay in the cities, but the, the army is going to go to the countryside to try to crack down on the resistance. They're going to do the most extreme things you can possibly imagine. They're going to, for example, as they did in South Africa, they're going to put women and children in concentration camps and have them starve. You need to be mentally prepared for all that shit that they're going to do. They're going to torture you like you've never imagined before. You've nothing like you've seen in the movies. It's going to be a million times worse. You got to mentally prepare for this. They're going to do whatever they can to hold on to power. These people do not even regard you as animals. They don't even think of you as the dust underneath your feet, underneath their feet. They think of you as absolutely nothing at all. They couldn't care less about you. They won't even look at you while they have other men killing you off. They don't care. They are having a cup of tea with their friends and you, you aren't even on their mind. That's how evil they are. That is what we are facing. But we are going to win precisely because they don't understand us. They misrepresent us. They misinterpret us. Right. They have no idea who they're dealing with. They're dealing with people who have already foreseen everything anyway. That's us. Have I read Always the Horizon? It's a small read by the makers of Murdoch Murdoch. Okay, I'm going to look into that though. Let me make a note of this. Always the Horizon. I don't know if I trust Murdoch Murdoch. It could be one of those uh, one of those funny outfits who always, you know, do what they tell you what you want to hear, but then, you know, but let's see, let's see. I'll have a look at it, you know. I, I always learn from everything. Agrarian people have always been a threat to the states. Yeah, religious resistors, R religious rural resistors who are fighting for something other than money they're fighting for their families or their beliefs or their god but they they are not fighting for money whereas the the urban technocrats they only care about money and that is also a way to manipulate them if you can become a cost to them right if fighting you becomes a cost to them they might not want to fight if they think they cannot win a protracted a protracted war it might cost them you know they're draining your tax funds anyway in the war against ukraine right you know in the war uh in the war against uh ukraine you know the conflict between ukraine and russia they are draining western funds the netherlands sent 17 billion euros to ukraine though i suspect a lot of that money is going to israel anyway to defend israel right uh they're committing absolutely evil crimes right and the problem with Ukraine is Ukrainian men, although you give them advanced weaponry, they didn't know how to use it. So the Ukrainian people, U Ukrainian men, they were uh, uh, unable to operate the tanks. They were unable to repair them on, on the battlefield. You know, they were unable to operate all sorts of infrastructure because they, did, they didn't get the training for it. They were really thrown into the meat grinder and no one cared. But we can't allow this. We need to right now start training our people with all the skills necessary. So read that book by Che Guevara. Let me Google it for a moment. Che Guevara wrote a book which was a manual for guerrilla warfare. Oh, that's what it was called, by the way. Uh, 
Che Guevara book. Now, like I said, I don't have to agree with the ideals and the principles of Che Guevara. Yeah, the book by Che Guevara, published in 1960, was called Guerrilla Warfare. It contains some valuable lessons of how to deal with this, how to survive in the countryside. You know, they're going to cut you out of your bank accounts, right? They're going to have the digital ID uh, and the, uh, uh, you know, you're going to have uh, the cashless society. But if you are friends with farmers, they will feed you and house you. They will hide you in their sheds, right? So that is how you have to do it. You, I mean, what do you really need as a guerrilla warrior? In the modern time, a horse for transportation, right? You need food and water. You can get that from farmers, right? So there are possibilities. Of course, they're going to crack down on the farmers, though, right? But you have to be careful uh, not to underestimate the power of primitive men willing to risk their lives to fight the most powerful empire in history, the global open society. Namely, that you have the opportunity to win, or at the very least, drain the enemy's resources. There's another book. Uh, so let me type this out. Che Guevara. This is one book you have to figure, have to find it. Che Guevara, uh, Guerrilla Warfare. Because there's another book that I want to... You know what? I'm going to get a picture of it. I'll put it on screen for a moment. You know, Google Images is sometimes a bit nasty when you want to download a picture about here. I got a picture of it here. Save image. All right, I'm going to put a picture up because there's another book by Ernst Jünger, The Forest Passage. I believe that may be even the most important book. Uh, let me go over it in a minute. But I want to show you the pictures of these books so that you know what I'm talking about, right? Here, view at large icons here, this one. All right, putting the source on the screen. This book, like I said, I do not agree with this man's, uh, you know, ideology. Uh, guerrilla warfare. Here, let me increase, enlarge it a little bit. Can you see the text? Che Guevara, Guerrilla Warfare. It's a manual for men who need to fight uh, the globalist powers, for example. Uh, you don't actually have to agree with what he with his politics, but you can definitely and you have to learn from his skill set, from the skills that they had fighting their enemy. We we are facing basically a similar kind of enemy anyway. Um, you know, a technocratic elite who don't care about us. You know. And there's another book by uh, uh, Ernst Jünger, Forest Passage. Maybe I can actually read it. If I can read a part of that book, because that book is so good, you have no idea how good it is. Uh, here, The Forest Passage by Ernst Jünger. Here. Wait. On a large image. Oh, this one, no. no. Damn it. It's hard to find a good picture. Forest Passage by Ernst Jünger. Ernst Jünger was a German a World War I veteran who also wrote the book Storm of Steel. Book. Here we go. Forest Passage. And uh, he, uh, he believed in a sort of aristocratic masculinity uh, that he believed was absolutely necessary to fight back against, uh, you know, the crimes being committed against our people. Damn it, Google, why is Google so difficult? Sometimes Google just doesn't give you what you want. All right, let me do it this way down. Okay, save. Uh, I'm going to read a passage from the book if I can find it. I'm doing this live, so I maybe, uh, you know, I have to do a little bit of uh, computer work. <laughs> I mean, I should have prepared for this, but I didn't think of it before. So it doesn't matter, you know. What we need is we need the right message to help our men ahead. Um, you know, like I mentioned uh, the new movie by Alex Garland, uh, Civil War. I'm going to watch it, but not for the reasons given. In that movie, they depict, you know, white women as... Here, this is a book, I mean. But they depict white women as, you know, if white women side with diversity and have their diverse friends, and they're going to fight the evil white men, because as though we're the problem, right? First of all, they get that wrong. The majority of white women are not going to side with diversity against their own white men. They're not going to do that. Believe me, this is nonsense. The majority of white women will support us. 
but only if we have a cause that they can rally behind, namely the survival of their people, the, the, you know, the, the progression of their children. The women who will betray us, however, are the urban feminist type women, Jewish and non-Jewish, the loser women. You know, they always say that men are losers, but there's also a female loser, right? The loser woman. She is going to side with diversity against white men because her daddy, her rich daddy didn't give her enough love or didn't give her enough money or something, right? That, that's, it's always the same story with them, right? But so don't don't count on it on this weird propaganda that says that the, the white women will side with diversity against like, they will side with and they always depict those men as like weak kind and gentle and soft diverse men right no no they're not going to do that this is nonsense uh, just because white women in general are not are not so outspoken in our movement they can't be because they have to guard their reputations of course that's why there's men like me and I just speak my mind but I do get some support from women. There are some very smart women who, who express their support for what I'm doing, which I uh, appreciate very, very much. You know, you know, these are women I might be on a more like, you know, on an intellectual level. We are simply kin kindred spirits. You know, uh, they're all they're all they're on TikTok as well, making videos, also talking about sort of topics I talk about. But it's important to realize that there are plenty of women who are wide awake and they're maybe just waiting for the men to start acting. You know, Andrew Tate had it wrong, by the way. Andrew Tate said that um, if you want to rule Europe, you need to get the young men to side with you. But he was wrong about that. You don't need the young men. You need the women. The young women need to support your cause. Because if the young women support your cause, the men will follow automatically. Right. So you don't need to convince the men. You need to make the sort of case that the women can support. And so you can say, oh, well, but women want diversity and immigration. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. Have you never spoken to women? I speak to a lot of women. You know, I'm an extrovert. So I met this Polish woman and she was she was talking to me about the topic of uh, the most beautiful, uh, the Miss, what do you call it? Miss, Mr. Universe election in Italy. And some kind, some some guy from Senegal or Nigeria won it. Some pitch black guy, and she told me that's what made her feel racist because she really did not find those men attractive. See, you know, you gotta talk to them, and you'll find out that a lot of what the media are trying to make us believe just isn't so. They're they're lying to us, you know. Yeah, Tate is mixed race. He's half African and Muslim. Yeah, you know, weirdo, you know. All right, I put the book on screen by Ernst Jünger, The Forest Passage. Uh, actually, I'm going to try if I can find a, a copy of this online because it contains a summary. If you, even if you don't like reading, then read the final part, which is the summary, uh, because it is the, the the literal manual for what we are going to have to do. We are going to have to fight an insurmountable enemy, and we're going to have to win. Here, I got a copy of it. PDF. Oh, just give me a minute. I'm going to read you uh, this very interesting story. So here's somebody in their 20s and, and they highly support, you know, and she's, oh, you're female and in your area, you're alone with these thoughts. It's so scary. Yeah. You know, you know, this is what, you know, I think, I think a lot more women will support us as soon as the men know what they're going to do next, you know. Oh, hey, Sophia liberal feminists and such other types are the ones with the most freedom online yeah here another woman lelouch victoria you also support my message see that's what i'm talking about yeah it seems as though diversity will win they may think that in their novels or whatever or whatever feminists are pushing out to women you know they try to paint that picture so white women will only survive by the side of their diverse friends or so right but that's probably not how it will be in reality you know it's unlikely in fact it's not going to be that way here i got the pdf now because i wanted to read the article or uh, read the book at least ah finally all right let's see where do i do this book had a summary and i'm going to look for it here the summary i'll go over it a little bit in a moment yeah. yeah, the the one the women who are online so much they create create these uh, social media echo chambers, right? Uh, and in their in their echo chambers, they they rely too much on mental fictions, on on things that are not real in the real world, you know. Uh, 
and I think but don't you think that at some point it becomes very clear that these are fictions and not realities you know the real the real outcome of this conflict between you know the western man and and the you know let's let's call them the the diverse diversocrats the diversity technocrats that, that they're not just they're just not going to win you know uh, Sophia says, uh, sadly, in my generation, most girls grew up consuming lots of media and they think diversity is a strength. Yeah, that's the propaganda, right? You see it in the movies, right? Uh, but then again, I think there are plenty of women who, who just don't naturally support this at all. If you go on TikTok live, uh, there's, you know, there's, a, you know, you can scroll through the live shows, right? Like you're doing right now. Then there's like, uh, there's a lot of like you notice there's a lot of like foreign men asking white women for attention and a lot of these women I've seen it live they say they're not interested in foreigners they just say that out loud there's plenty of them like that you know uh, yeah yeah they they portrayed Isaac Newton now as a, as a mixed race fellow yeah that's just weird you know what do you think of DEI what's that diversity what is DEI forced into corporations? Probably something weird, right? Uh, yeah, diversity isn't a strength. Diversity is a uh, what, what diversion or something. Yeah, it's a diversion tactic, probably. Yeah, I think it's also many young men are not real men. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and good girls were failed a few times and converted. Yeah, and the media shows weak males. Yeah, well, you know, in the in the in the in the commercials in the online commercials right they um uh, they always show white men as these weak losers you know <laughs> but it you know i know you have these these leftist weak men the vegan types and they're you know the way they look is just weird right but again there is a whole demographic that doesn't even watch tv anyway you know and this is this is who we are you know all right i'm gonna Wait, I have this on screen. Image. I want to read you the manual of how to fight back. Here, let me put it on screen again. This is Ernst Jünger's book, The Forest Passage. It's just crucial. It shows you, uh, uh, it's just two pages. So let me go through it and then you'll get the point. Okay, so how are we going to win the, uh, how are we going to win the revolt against modernity? How are we going to defeat the technocrats, okay? Step one, the questions put to us are simplified and made more incisive. Two, these questions drive us to an either or decision as revealed in elections. You must be either for Democrat or Republican. And if you just make your choice, that will be the solution, right? Three, the freedom to say no to the whole system is systematically ex excluded. You can't vote against uh, the United States system as a whole, right? Four, this is intended to demonstrate the, the superiority of the questioner. The questioner means the state. The state gives out elections. So the state is always superior to the people who are merely allowed to vote. Five, it turns a nay or a no into a venture that only one in a hundred will dare. Uh, here they mean to say that... Uh, how many people would openly dare to say no to diversity, for example? Right? Very few. Only one in a hundred would dare it. Six, the arena for this venture is strategically ill-chosen. Seven, this is no objection to its ethical significance. Eight, the forest passage is freedom's new answer. Nine, free men are powerful even in tiny minorities. A well-organized clique of guerrilla warriors is more powerful than an army. Our present epoch is poor in great men, but it brings figures to the light, right? So some, some, we will need leaders, especially in Europe, you're going to have to need good leaders in every country and in the United States, in every state. And in Britain, in every country you have, like Scotland, Ireland, England, you need your leaders who are born of the people so that they will lead the people, right? Diversity is not okay, that's right. 
Uh, this book, you can find it on libgen.io or libgen.rs and just Google it for the PDF, uh, The Forest Passage. Uh, so the danger leads to the formation of small elites. Small elites, those would be the guerrilla elites who are going to get organized in all our countries in the Western world to start fighting this globalistic technocratic enemy. 12. The figures of the worker and the unknown soldier are joined by a third, the forest rebel. Okay, so I read the book and I'll explain this for a little moment. The worker, you understand who that is. The working class people who work with their hands, right? The unknown soldier is the military guys. Military guys, police guys, right? They are going to join the forest rebel. The forest rebel is, according to this book, is someone who has lived... Uh, apart from society for a very long time, and he only emerges from the forest to fight the corrupt leaders of, of the world, basically. All right? 13. Fear, 14, can be conquered by the individual. 15. Once he realizes his power. So the idea is that we form guerrilla elites of men who are unafraid of anything, who have no more afraid of death, no more fear of death, right? Uh, the forest passage as free action in the face of catastrophe is independent of the foreground political technicalities and their groupings. Uh, the forest passage does not contradict the, develop the development of our people, but brings freedom into it through the decisions of the individual. Um, basically, it means to say that individuals are able to change course. In the forest passage, there is a meeting of man with himself in his undivided and indestructible substance. This meeting banishes the fear of death. This is crucial that you stop being afraid of death. The men who are going to fight the globalist technocrats cannot be fearful of death. Even the churches can only lend a hand here since man stands alone in his choices. The theologian may be able to make his situation clear to him, to the rebel, but cannot deliver him from it. You have to do it yourself. The forest rebel crosses the null meridian under his own power. In the question of healthcare, law, and arms, the rebel takes his own sovereign decisions. You don't listen to anybody anymore. Morally, too, he does not act according to any doctrine and reserves the right to judge the law for himself. Right? We decide what's right and wrong. He takes no part in the cult of crime. He decides what to consider property and how he will defend it. We choose our own territories, the territories, the territories that we can control and defend. Right? Uh, he is aware of the inviolable depths, inviolable depths from which the world rises up to constantly fulfill the world. Here lies the tasks of being here and now. Okay, okay, this is a bit cryptic, right? It's a little bit cryptic here, but. Um, what the book The Forest Passage is trying to say is that individuals who unite as guerrilla warriors who are no longer afraid of death, they can and will change the course of history. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, England is very broken. Uh, same with Ireland. And they're doing this everywhere now. You know, what do you think is going to happen to the USA? They're going to get this Vivac or a Nimarata why you should ask why do they have all these indian and pakistani people elected as our as our officials but at the same time uh you know they don't choose asians for example no russians no asians right no no iranians but a lot of hindu people uh and some muslims too i suppose but it's mostly hindu people why are we doing this i think it is because the western elites they are trying to use India as a way to fight China. So they need to onboard them, so to speak. That's why we get all these Indian and Pakistani leaders, because they need them to fight, you know. Yeah, people fear death because they have no faith. This is exactly true. You know, if you, if you know that what you believe in is beyond the material realm, then you're not afraid to go and meet it, right? I suppose that's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sophia says, uh, men died for thousands of years fighting for faith, marching on in the name of God and country. And that's, that's exactly what we need to return to, you know. The idea that we are just here to make money and, and you know, 
That's what our elites do. They are like that. Are the sort of elites that we have in the Western world, they're extremely narcissistic people who only care about money and only care about what they'll look like internationally. So they want to be diverse and they want to be inclusive because they don't want to cause trouble because it's costly to go to war, right? Uh, unless, and I think this is the point, if we Europeans would, if, if the men of the West would become such a costly factor to deal with, more costly than, than global war, that is when the elites will finally start listening to us. We need to become basically more brutal than their worst nightmares. Then they will listen to us. At least that's my point. You know? Yeah, English, England is finished. No, I don't believe that. I, never, I don't like to speak in that kind of tone where you say, oh, it's all over. Europe is lost. We'll never win again. I don't look at it like that. I look at this as a great challenge and we're going to win this. We're going to win this because the enemy doesn't understand us. You know, if you are, what, look at what the US is doing. They're not hiring white men anymore for any positions of uh, uh, corporate authority, corporate management or so, right? So what they're doing is, right? They're, uh, they're, they're, they're phasing white men out, but then what are white men going to do? They're not going to sit idly. The white men very rapidly will find each other. And basically, you don't need to have some woman sign off on your diversity quotum uh, to join a militia. And that's the whole damn point. You join your militias and you win. You fight, you know. <clears throat> the enemy is all those leftist global open society people, the billionaire class, you know, them, they, them, <laughs> they, them, they slash them. That's the enemy. You know. Yeah. You know, yeah, the leadership in the Western world, as, uh, as you say, yeah, they took away our country, they spat on our culture and erased faith, replacing it with the foreign religion. Yeah, they're, they're pushing Islam hard. And, but also the religion, don't underestimate the religion of materialism and Marxism, you know. They want you to really believe in the Apple iPhone. They want Apple to be a new, your religion, basically. You know, a lot of people don't see through that yet. They think... Do you know how many normal people take their whole cue of reality from uh, uh, from TV, from the TV commercials, from the TV soap operas and so on? They think that's reality. If you ask people, how many, do you, how many people do you think in the USA are African-Americans? They say things like 50% because that's how they see it on TV. But it's not 50, it's 13. Or if you ask people, how many people are transgender? They say, well, you know, 20%. It's, it's like one in a million people have bottom surgery in the U.S. in a year. One in a million. That's how rare this is, you know. It's not real. How to find European women not brainwashed? <laughs> well, just <laughs> go look for them in the comment section here, I'd say, because here you, here you already find a few. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they will sit in their ivory towers and then these are bureaucrats. They design, they think they can just design reality by drawing, uh, you know, childish images on a piece of paper. You know, this is absolutely sad, you know. Uh, yeah, you know. All right, so I need a little sip. So I actually look forward to guerrilla warfare against our technocratic elites. You know, they maybe underestimate this, but maybe they think that, uh, you know, the white men in commercials, white men looking stupid in commercials is the reality, but it's not. There are so many people who would love this fight. I mean, the, the Germanic peoples of Europe... They had a religion that said that if they died in battle on earth, they would go to Valhalla to fight another war. They, they literally go to war so they can go to war again, you know. Uh, someone sent me a rose. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you hate what they've done to Ireland, but they're doing it to all European countries. It's, just, it's not just Ireland. They're doing it to the Netherlands, to Belgium, to France, to Germany. If we don't rise up fast and seize the homes, you know, they're building tons of homes to, to accommodate uh, immigrant housing. But, you know, we need to get those homes. We need to basically get rid of our governments. And perhaps the answer is guerrilla warfare in some form. Because what else are you going to do, you know? 
Yeah, they castrated the men and made the women dog moms. <laughs> and those same people call us unhinged and out of touch. Yeah, yeah this is so nasty. Who is the leader of this globalist system? You know, for a while I thought it was Henry Kissinger. He passed away recently. Henry Kissinger is the one who appointed Klaus Schwab to the World Economic Forum. So it's definitely them. And and that is weird because Henry Henry Kissinger was the architect of the Trilateral Committee. They wanted to fuse Russia with Europe and the USA, basically to unite the Northern Hemisphere, which is not a bad idea in itself. But somehow they kind of abandoned that and now they're at war with Russia again, you know? Uh, Anyway, this Henry Kissinger, you know, have you ever seen his uh, quote unquote wife? <laughs> he was probably uh, dating a tranny or something, right? And these people, they're not normal. The, the Henry Kissinger type people, they believe that everything is connected. They believe that the universe is one big mind or something, a God mind, and they literally hate physical reality. They want people to live on Facebook in the metaverse, right? They want to abandon the physical reality. Uh, and this is a bit absurd because I think, uh, in a way, the mental world represents the feminine and the physical world represents the masculine in our reality. And so uh, what we men must do then is simply defy the logic of the feminist thinkers and uh, yeah, really just go, go ahead and build our own reality, build what we want it to be, you know? There are many brainwashed people in general, but not all women are brainwashed. Clearly not, you know. Clearly not. Yeah, never vote for an incumbent. Okay. Do you think we should create diversity among each other, like French learn Dutch, Dutch to Norwegian? Well, you know, it's inevitable that the European men will have to work together regardless of our linguistic differences. So we can speak in English to each other, and that's fine, you know. Uh, you know, someone said that, you know, Bulgarians have nothing in common with Swedes. And to some extent, yeah, Irish people have nothing in common with Portuguese people and so on and so forth. But we do all share this in common, that we are all in the same situation. You know, we're all in it together. We all have the same problem. We all have, uh, uh, we all have the same treacherous, treasonous governments who are, you know, mangling our minds so much. They're, 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 they are really waging war on our minds. That's something Alex Jones would say, but it's true. They are manipulating our thoughts to believe things that aren't so, to believe things that are unhealthy. In the Netherlands, in the last few days, media started spouting the message that we should eat less eggs fewer eggs no more milk no more meat like what are you doing all right uh they have doctors fake doctors pseudo doctors or actors saying things like well eating meat isn't healthy or oh, milk isn't healthy and they're trying to they're trying to explain that well the only reason why we still have to eat meat is because we need pigs to eat our trash or something you know it doesn't make any sense it is clearly meant to physically weaken us. They want us to eat rice and beans, but that's the Southeast Asian diet. You know, if you want to get 30 grams of protein from rice and beans, you're going to have to eat like a kilogram of that stuff, whereas you also would get it from 90 grams of beef give you 30 grams of protein. But try to get 30 grams of protein from spinach. You'll be eating a kilo of spinach, you know? It's just, un you can't do it. You, you ha what happens is, look at the East Asians. Why are they physically so much smaller than us on average? It's because they have that vegan diet of rice and beans. Because you have to eat so much to get the, the, the nutrients in, that means the bodies have to be smaller. And I think they're honestly trying, a lot of this, a lot of the manipul a lot of the, uh, the mind warfare being waged against our people, uh, clearly comes stems from this this idea that we should all be made equal. So the Europeans are physically tall and big. We need to make them smaller, physically smaller, so they can eat rice and beans uh, and live off live off a bowl of rice a day. You know. Oh yeah, that's a good. That's true. Yeah, they want us to eat the powdered stuff like protein powders. Yeah, vegan protein powders, of course. Yeah, and whatever. Like in the Netherlands, they started teaching on a, on a school trip. They started teaching children to eat, uh, what were they called? Bullworms. You can Google bullworms, dried bullworms. That's just nuts. Inst inst like a, as a source of protein, you know? 
I don't know if that was the right word. I, yeah, dried bullworms is a... Ugh, these things are nasty. Like, what the hell? Man? Okay, this is weird. They were trying to get you to eat worms as a source of, uh, a source of protein. They're really pushing that, that bug life, you know, the bug story. It's, it's also about genetics. Yeah? East Asians just have lower muscle mass in general. Well, they have to have it because if you have to survive or on a bowl of rice and beans, you can't have a lot of muscle. Also, I think the East Asians actually genetically evolved to digest the grain and the cereal-based uh, based diets, and we didn't. The Northwest Europeans are actually specialists in, in pastoralism. We are supposed to eat meat, milk, and dairy, and eggs, and so on. You can add your fruit and your, your cereals if you want to, but that is the base food of us. The fact that they are, they are attacking meat eating is very clearly a way uh, to sabotage to sabotage, sabotage us through the food supply, right? And I think that's really, uh, really extreme, yeah. Anyway. Uh, somebody is married to an Asian, okay. So meat is the way to develop good nutrition. Well, meat is a nutrient-dense food. Everything is in there. Almost everything is in there. You can, meat, like, grass-fed beef is literally the only food or one of the few foods that you can live off without eating anything else. You can survive on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they've been eating rice for like 12,000 years in East Asia. All right. And my people have been half nomadic for 500 years. Okay. Who's your people? Okay, we need to eat the whole animal. The liver, liver, heart, brains, kidney. Yeah, I do eat some liver sometimes. Yeah, chicken liver. Chicken liver is so high. In vi There's more chicken, uh, vitamin C in chicken liver than in... Then in oranges, <laughs> yeah, meat ha meat is just the superior food. It's just obvious. They want to attack us through the food supply as just one more vector of 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 getting at us. You know. Ah. Uh, yesterday I did an almost two hour long stream. Today I'm going to cap it off at about an hour. Um, uh, YouTube gave me my first strike. I was uploading my, my streams to YouTube thinking nothing of it uh, because I give you know general descriptions and no weird, no weird claims in the text and so on. And then YouTube gave me the first strike because of, uh, because I spoke, I said, I spoke about uh, that thing that, that what they give you the jabs for. That's weird. Like, that's the only thing they censored me for, for the Jibby Jab program. They're doing it again, aren't they? I can't talk about it, but they're doing it again. In the, you see these, uh, you know, commercial advertisings that, you know, the flu season is back, you know. <clears throat> yeah, we should stock up on, uh, on cattle. We need just live, We need livestock and we need territories we can defend, you know. Yeah, in the United States, Asian kids had issues digesting milk in school. Yeah, obviously. They didn't give water. <laughs> yeah, that's who we are. Our people can drink milk, you know. And, and of course, uh, black people cannot digest it very well. Most of them can't. Asians can't digest it. Right. Even though for us, it's extremely useful. We are, we are supposed to drink this stuff. In Russia, we used to eat moose liver. It's delicious. Okay. Yeah, don't throw anything away, you know. Yeah, Native Americans used to live on mostly buffalo. Really? Yeah, well, good for them, you know. Let's see if I can catch up on the news. Uh, I can go to Zero Hedge. I might stay with you for like 10 minutes or so more. I am angry. Oh, yeah. Have you heard the story about the uh, the Harvard uh, president, Claudine Gay, who plagiarized some parts? And, you know, she's anti-Israel, that, but that's not the reason why I think she should step down. I Clearly, I also don't really support the whole Palestine-Israel conflict. But for this woman... You know, it's simply they're lowering standards to get more black people in positions of authority and prestige. You know, and that's just weird, you know. <laughs> What's this all about? <laughs> 
Yeah, Zero Hedge. Who reads Zero Hedge? Zero Hedge is quite interesting sometimes, right? Oh, yeah, there was this Boston mayor, a female Asian woman who had a segregated holiday party excluding white people, the electeds of color. You see, this is my point. White people, white people think that Asian, that the diversity people are always part of us, right? But no, they have their own events, their own parties. They, they've always had them. Maybe that's something white people don't really want to understand, you know? Karine Jean-Pierre, yeah, another one of those nutters, yeah? All right, see you. See you, Sophia. Have you watched Leave Your World Behind? They try to reprogram us for the coming plans. Yeah, what do you think about Geert Wilders? Yeah, everybody asks me, but the guy is controlled opposition. He's just a major Zionist, you know. Patrick Bateman just watched it. Funny that he, that Ob the Obamas produced it. Okay, you know, in Dublin, <laughs> Miss Nigeria competition each year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they bring in these black women into our elections. But you know, just like the transgender guys who s seem to win these elections, it's not real. You know, the the general public doesn't vote for these things. The elections are rigged. Obviously, it's just fake. <clears throat> All right, all right. Let's see if I can talk about something more before I leave you. Uh, while I'm at it, you can you can always follow me also on TikTok, uh, Twitter at JohannesMKX, or on my Substack www.jmk.info. There you can find uh, <clears throat> uh, my newsletter. I'll send one out usually once a week or so. And I'm on YouTube at the Great Johannes, but I don't know how long YouTube will last. Eventually, they're gonna clock me out what were my thoughts on brexit as a brit i have soured on it i believe the u.s wanted us to remove ourselves from europe to divide the eu's power yeah possibly because the the anglo world is the sea world it's the world of the oceans whereas mainland europe and, and russia that's more like continental stuff right so that's the difference between sea and land and i think they wanted britain to be uh, away from from uh, from Europe, yeah, definitely, to create a sort of uh, Atlantic sphere or so with Britain in it. <clears throat> but in the end, you notice that it didn't matter much for the people, right? Even though you Brexited, you have more immigrants from Pakistan and India coming in now. It's just really, it's just really weird, you know. They push immigrants in thinking they'll control them easier, more easily, but, but it's becoming chaos in Europe, yeah. All right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say goodbye to you. Have a nice evening. Uh, you can follow me on uh, jmk.info on my website. or uh, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow, most, most likely. I'll, I'm going to try to do this every day uh, for an hour or so. So uh, good luck to everybody.